Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Point Blank, V is for Victory. This is a game designed by Sean Drulinger and published by Lock and Load Publishing. Well, I first saw this back in 2018 at WBC when I sat down and did a demo with Sean and saw it in its kind of earlier stages and it was really intriguing. This is kind of like Upfront. I know a lot of people are going to make that immediate association and it is, but it is using the Lock and Load tactical system basically converted to a card game. And it is really interesting. The thing that I found a little different was having to change from the overhead top-down hex and counter view to the card view. There are some things that you have to abstract out in your head and kind of change up a little bit, but it's not a difficult transition to make. And when you do make it, there's kind of like that aha moment where it just really clicks. Anyone who's played up front will make that transition a little easier, I think, than everyone else who's not played up front. But I think it is an interesting way to explore tactical combat using cards. So let's take a look at the back of the box and see what this game's all about. Point Blank V is for Victory is Lock and Load Publishing's tactical World War II squad level card war game for one to two players either against one another or using our solitaire module. This game pits the Allied forces from the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, and the French Resistance against the many different branches of the German armed forces on the Western Front in 1944. Each scenario presents the players with a unique situation involving squads of men, support weapons, leaders, and individual armored fighting vehicles. Each scenario presents players with special victory conditions, such as defending or taking objectives, seeking and destroying their opponent's units, or one of many other different objectives. The game can be played on our map board, or without the map board on any tabletop surface. Gameplay is made up of terrain cards in the game and managed through a distance system that accounts for the range to targets, line of sight, and defensive attributes. Actions in the game consist of fire, move, assault, rally, etc. The action cards contain dice icons on them to determine random results. The unique card deck system used in Point Blank Vias for Victory never leaves players waiting for the cards to conduct actions. As players change terrain, they will draw a terrain card in which their moving units will occupy. Some action cards, such as Recon, help players manage what terrain they occupy, but your opponent may have other plans for removing troops during their turn. Players will find the combat in Point Blank Vias for Victory to be fast and ferocious, and fans of our Lock and Load Tactical series will find it familiar. Point Blank Vias for Victory offers new game concepts that can be summarized as being innovative and exciting to play. And you see an example of the cards down here at the bottom, and we get inside 119 mini cards, 698 poker cards, a 32 by 38 two-piece map, a core rulebook, scenario and module rulebook, nine player aid cards, two counter sheets, and two dice. It is for ages 12 and up, one to two players, two to four hours playing time, and the complexity is rated five out of 10, and the solitaire suitability is a 10. It is a big, heavy box. So let's take a look inside and see what we get. One thing I want to point out, being that I just uh, said this is a really big box, look how thick this box is. This is a very, very thick, sturdy box, which is necessary because there's so many cards in here. So great job by lock and load for making sure the box doesn't fall apart when you are picking it up. So we get our core rule book, module rules and scenarios, two-piece map, counter sheets, and also has the player aid cards in there, and the insert with all of the cards that are used in the game. So let's set up the map and take a closer look at the game. And here's a look at the map that comes with the game, and you're going to see some terrain already out there thinking, oh, this is what the map is, it's a static map board. No, the terrain that's here is actually very subdued, and it's for artistic effect. It has nothing to do with actual gameplay. This is the Allied side, this is the Axis side, this is the center line, the no man's land, so to speak. You're going to be approaching as the Allies from this side and the Axis from that side. The underlying terrain, like I said, is for artistic effect. Each of these sectors is going to have a card put in there, a terrain card put in there that is going to tell you what the terrain is in that sector. And again, when you move out, you move into another sector, same thing, you're going to place terrain down there. If there are no terrain tiles in there, then you're going to have clear terrain. That's all that's going to mean. 
and the beginning when you have your scenario setups it's going to tell you okay this is what the scenario dictates here you're going to have maybe clear terrain here or hills or whatever in the center and then here you just randomly draw cards or it'll tell you a specific card to put in the different sectors and then where you're going to be placing your units because they're setting up the landscape for you to fight on but it will evolve over time and as you move in to a different section you're going to be drawing a terrain card to find out what the terrain is going to be in that section which is going to be uh, like i said a little bit different at first than you're expecting but it does make sense once you play it and right here you just see these columns and in the center a lot of card gamers may think oh this is one of those games where you just place out terrain and you battle over that section of terrain only all the units in this aisle here will fight over that no it's not one of those type of card games where you have three different terrain tiles and then you're battling one against one over to win that one section of terrain so this is a little bit different than what we're used to when it comes to your standard hex encounter tactical game this is going to be evolving as the situation unfolds in the scenario. And I think that's actually really cool because you're discovering the terrain that you're fighting on just like your men are on the ground. And I think that's pretty neat. Next, we'll take a look at the player aids. And in true lock and load fashion, there are plenty of them and they're also in numerical order. So we'll start off with player aid 01A, the phases of the game. Gives us the upkeep phase, the impulse phase, turn in phase, and the victory conditions check. And as you'll notice, each of these phases also has the rule number associated with it, so you can look it up if you have any questions during play. On the back is 01B, Terrain and Objectives. It gives you the tables for both the terrain and the objectives, as well as associated notes on the right-hand side of the card. On the next play raid, we have the Bog Summary, Stacking Limits Per Sector, and the AFE Button Modifiers. On the back, we have Play Raid 02B, which is all about firing. Firing procedures, ordnance range, infantry, ordnance attacks, firepower attack resolution versus infantry or AFVs, modifiers versus infantry, modifiers versus AFVs, and fire base damage checks at the bottom. On the next sheet, 03A is all about combat. We get the out of ammo summary, squad weapon breakdown, hero summary, crew abandoned AFV, LOS summary, and spotting recon and concealment at the bottom. And this LOS summary is going to be very helpful during play because, like I said, this is a different type of map, different type of game. You're going to have to have a different way of thinking, and this will help you in learning the approach to understanding line of sight in point blank. On the back, we have miscellaneous tables for support weapons, flamethrowers, radio, white phosphorus, smoke, sniper check, loading and unloading from vehicles, and flanking. On the next sheet, we have the melee overrun and miscellaneous tables. On the back, we have the heroes and their abilities. At the top, we have the hero markers and then the unique characteristics or abilities for each of the heroes at the bottom. And we finish up the two-player player aids with 05A. This covers the game icons and cards. And on the back, 05B, we have leader, shaken, and fatigue. Then the remainder of the player aid cards will cover the solitaire aspect of the game. We start off with 0A, which is the solo flow chart for defensive posture recon and offensive posture recon. On the back, we have the offensive and defensive posture AEO upkeep phase. The AEO is the enemy AI, so that will give you the steps for handling everything for the AEO during the upkeep phase. On the next sheet, we have the defensive posture move. On the back, we have the offensive and defensive posture actions. On 03A, we have Offensive Posture Move. On the back, we have Offensive and Defensive Posture Move. Then on the final player aid, we have the Offensive and Defensive Posture Unit Spend or Discard Action. Then on the back, we have the AEO Action Selection. Next, we'll take a look at the counter sheets that come with the game. And the first thing I want to say is, these have a really beautiful finish to these, and they will punch very, very easy. These are going to be used just for tracking states and statuses in the game, primarily administrative counters as well as control of different spaces on the board. Because remember, this is a card game. All your units and the terrain, everything is going to be handled through the cards. And on the second sheet, we have the remaining administrative counters for use in the game. Next, we'll take a look at the cards that come with the game. And instead of doing what I normally do, where I kind of drill down and look at the cards closely, 
Instead, I wanted to show you the sheer volume of cards you get and the vast mix of units you get with this game. At the top, we have the German units. Below that, we have the U.S. And beneath that, we have the Commonwealth forces as well as some partisan units here. The action cards, then we have the terrain cards, and the objective cards. Then we have Blaze and Smoke down there. The terrain cards alone, just to show you how much varied terrain there is, that is the size of the deck. It is a big deck. Same for the action cards are just slightly shorter than the terrain cards. But you can see quite a bit of cards here, which means there's going to be a lot of replay value, a lot to explore with this game both with the included scenarios and those that you can make yourself and other fans will make as well. Next, we'll take a look at the rules. This is a 94 page full color rule book. Inside the front cover, we start with the table of contents that goes on for a couple of pages, giving you a breakdown of all the rules, their page numbers. Then we get to the card breakdown, explains to you all aspects of the cards, the squads, support weapons, weapons, teams, leaders, all the things we've already looked at when we looked at the cards. I'll explain to you here your AFVs, and then your objectives and terrain. Unit actions, and then the icon names here are explained as well, so that way you know what each of the icons is. Iconography is going to be big with cards because it just you don't have a lot of space, so you have to understand the iconography, and plenty of explanation here in the rulebook. Then we get to the introduction on page 8 about the game support, the rulebook components, overview of play, game phases, the map board tiles, how to lay out your maps, Impulse, action cards, terrain cards, objective cards, support weapons, leaders. And one thing you'll notice, if you've not already known that about Lock and Load Publishing, I said it's a 94-page rulebook, but look at how big the text is, plenty of graphics, things like that. So 94 pages may seem intimidating at first, but when you look at the rules and the pages, what's on each of the pages, you say, wow, they really go into great detail, giving you examples, lots of graphics as well as the text itself. So if you made it text only, it'd probably be half the size, but they definitely step up the page count when they give you really detailed explanations. All the different aspects of the battlefield explained to you. Here you have a graphic example as well. Ordnance ranges, short range, medium range, long range. Example here, we've got an M10 unit firing ordnance an M10 unit firing ordnance is at A4 on the U.S. player side, firing at a Stug in C4 on the German player side. The M10 would use the white section of the ordnance range bar on his unit card as the distance between the units is more than 6. And you can see here the long range is 6+. plus. Then we have stacking, overstacking, fire attacks, morale, ordnance attacks, actions, spent and discard, ready and spent, good order, heroes, rolling the dice, discarded cards, and then ending your turn in end turn summary. Then we have setting up the game here on page 27. All this information here prior to that is giving you all the steps that you can do in the game, all the things and how they're defined and what happens during them. Now we get into the game setup on page 27. Set up your game, select the scenario, determine size, lay out the battlefield, and deploy your units. Draw your action cards, phases of the game, upkeep phase, all the steps for the upkeep phase, your steps for your impulse phase, all the actions you can do on each of these phases. Then you have your game function, blazes, bogging and unbogging, button and unbuttoned AFVs, covered arcs, illustrated examples, explaining to you the covered arcs. And you have your covered arc summary, and then you have a text example, another text example here. So you've got a combination of text examples and illustrated examples sprinkled throughout, which is really good. Then we have here... U.S. AFV at its home player's side on C2 firing at a German AFV in A2. The inspection of terrain and objectives in the U.S. AFV sector reveals no blocking terrain, the targeted German AFV, and the inspection of terrain reveals no terrain. So LOS between the two exists. So that way you get an example of how to understand your line of sight. You got it's blocked here, blocked here, it's degraded, and then it's clear. So that way you can see a graphical example of them. And you can even have line of sight across, too. That's something else that I think a lot of people are going to expect. It's just going to be straight up and down like this. It's like, nope, you can actually go diagonally as well. So that's something that's really cool. You're not going to have that linear battlefield that's going to be all over the place. But line of sight is something that will take a little bit of time to get used to. It's not difficult. It's just you have to change your way of thinking. But again, like I said, with the, everything with this game, at first it may seem a little different, and it is. But once you get it... It clicks and it just becomes really easy to understand and really easy to play. Melee and overrun resolution. 
that's covered for a few pages. There's your overruns. Then we have retreats out of ammunition, shaken units, smoke. Then we have spotting, spotted summary support weapons, flamethrowers. Yeah, good old Zippo. AFEs and barrages, support weapon breakdowns, terrain, unique characteristics, turrets, transfer support weapons, weapons teams, white phosphorus, wind, assault, concealment, fire, cover, all the different icons. Remember we talked about that before, all the iconography, it's all explained to you here. Firing ordnance and infantry, fire attack summary, infantry fire attacks, ordnance attack summary, loading and unloading, melee and overrun, moves, rally, ready, recon, sniper, unit action, terrain deck, terrain and objective card details, all broken down for you so you understand what each piece of the terrain is on those cards. Really great detail. Again, 94 page book. A lot of it is really just definitions or breakdowns of what each of the different cards is more so than the actual steps and the rules. So it's not like a super difficult game to grok. Game narrative. Solo rules, solo system overview here on page 87. Now your setup, your defender setup. Remember we looked at those uh, play raid cards that gives you all of the steps. This is gonna explain how to use it here. Game start, AEO unit selection, impulse phase, assault actions, cover actions, rally actions, AEO leaders, ready actions. Then we have the AEO adaptation. And then we have the series resources where we have the video boot camp there. Always check that out. Tabletop simulator module, as well as the vassal module. Then we have the glossary here at the back and the credits at the back of the rule book. We have a little blurb on the game. Next, we'll take a look at the module rules and scenarios. This is an 84 page full color book. Inside of the front cover, we have the table of contents listing out all the scenarios, the special scenario rules, everything, and their associated page numbers. And we have a little fiction here, it looks like, at the first couple pages to get you in the mood to play the game. Then we have the introduction, support, nation-specific rules for the U.S., British, German, and the French resistance, as well as Canadian forces. And then the mapping grid key explained to you here. Scenario terrain instructions how to design your own scenarios, different types of aspects to build your own scenarios, meeting engagement, meeting A, meeting B, meeting C, defender versus attack, A and B. And then we have a little ad for some upcoming products from Lock and Load Publishing. Then we start off with the scenarios. Bedlam Bridge, we get the OOBs for both the US and the Germans. Your number of turns and first impulses, victory conditions, the solo play posture, and the SSR, your special scenario rules. Then we have the train cards, and then we have the battlefield setup explained to you here in graphical format. So not just telling you, they're actually showing you, which is great. So that's going to be the format that each of these scenarios is going to follow. And it looks like from the number of units in it, it's going to be a fairly small one to get you started and get you into the game slowly. Then we have... Donut Saint Comme de Mont, Ham and Bloody Jam, Vive la Resistance, Hell on the L, Teeth Meet Teeth, Mayhem, a lot of scenarios. Here, Kitty Kitty, 29 Let's Go, Dying for Saint Lo. Oh, bloody hell. I love that for the British. Long rail coming. We chase Germans. <laughs> like the title of that. Marigny. Firefight at the Manor House. In the Eye of the Storm. World War Witch. Go Line Stance. Attacking the Grosbeak Heights. Terrible Victory. The 100. Frozen Blood at Buchenbach. And then we get into the campaign rules. So that way, 
when you're done with the individual scenarios, you want to get into something a little bit bigger. You have your campaigns and how you can do that introduction, player force selection, offensive player, defensive player, and then linking your scenarios and then your campaign scenarios. Force OOBs and then NASSRs. And then you have your force order battles for U.S. infantry and armor. Same for the German infantry and armor. Then we have scenario one, bridges over tumultuous waters. Scenario two. And scenario three, last train to Avranche. Then we have the credits. An ad for Heroes of the Bitter Harvest. Then we are at the back of the scenario book. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Point Blank, V is for Victory. This is a game designed by Sean Drulinger and published by Lock and Load Publishing. Well, you can see inside this big heavy box is a lot of goodness. We looked at the cards. We didn't go into detail on them. I wanted you to see the variety of forces that are out there for all the nations that are in this game. You've got different types of infantry. You've got different types of vehicles, support weapons, leaders. We didn't look at the leaders and the support weapons over here. Those were kind of tucked in on the side. You might have missed those, but didn't want to point those out there. And we've got this great insert. Puts them all back in the box and you don't have to worry about it. Now, I know some people may like the sleeve and that's fine. If you want a sleeve, this is not gonna work for you. This insert, there is another insert option that you can create yourself that is on the lock and load site, but I don't see a need for sleeving this game. If you want to sleeve anything, maybe sleeve the action cards because they're gonna be shuffled up and you're gonna be using those, but I don't even see a real need for those. Just be mindful of your cards and you'll be good to go. But there is a lot of game in this box, a lot of scenarios. They even teach you how to make your own so you can make your own or you can play what other people make. So this game definitely has legs on it. And I think it'd be great to see an expansion because you've already got several nations here for the Western Front. Now maybe get into the Eastern Front and hey, love to see the Pacific too. So Sean, let's get those Marines and Japanese in action for the next iteration of Point Blank. But looking forward to getting this one on the table and giving it another run because it's been a few years since I last played it. Congrats to Sean to getting this one completed. It was great seeing it in 2018 at WBC, but it's even better seeing the finished product here in 2022. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this one. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.